Okay, I think we'll get started in another minute or two. We'll just wait with a few more people joining. I just want to make sure everyone knows this is a kindergarten readiness night designed specifically for parents. This is not uh, something your students or your children need to participate in. There will be um, times and activities and things that are specific for them later on. Okay, I think we are ready to start if all of our presenters can unmute themselves just to make sure that that's working. Okay. There you go. All right. Um, I believe we are going to start with a video and then I will turn it over. Here's to the 6,122 kindergartners, elementary students, middle schoolers, and 9th through 12th graders who arrive at Anchor Bay each morning ready to learn. And here's to the 305 teachers, coaches, and staff who are already here getting ready to help their students succeed again today. Because at Anchor Bay Schools, our goal is to help our students reach theirs. Well, welcome everyone. We're glad that you're here tonight for our kindergarten readiness presentation for Anchor Bay School District. And my name is Terry Wedge. I'm director of elementary education for the district and I oversee the programs at all of our elementary schools. And like I said, I'm really glad that you're here and we're gonna share some great information for you. And Normally when we're together, I would ask everyone if this is your first kindergartner coming to, coming to the district, but it's hard to see everybody at the same time. So of course we have to do things a little bit different right now, but I'm anticipating that things are gonna open up pretty soon and we can have a little bit more of normalcy when we have these types of presentations in the future. So I'm going to start by introducing our presenters for tonight and also some others that are helping along tonight also. The, we have three kindergarten teachers that have put time into this presentation over the last couple years and they are just rock star teachers. We are very thankful to have them in our district and I'm gonna start by miss, um, introducing Mrs. Davis and she's one of our kindergarten teachers at one of our buildings. And we also have Mrs. Hunt. She's another kindergarten teacher and we have Mrs. McClelland. Those three teachers um, have been working in the district. They're veteran teachers. They've been around for a while. They're excellent at what they do. And I, 
go to them all the time and, and get their viewpoints on things. And they're on many committees that help us and they are just excellent. And we really appreciate what they do for us. So they're gonna talk a little bit in a, a little bit here with our presentation and talk about getting your students ready for kindergarten and what to expect for this next school year. Another person I want to introduce is Mrs. Van Hall. She's here on the Zoom meeting and she's our lead administrator for kindergarten. And again, she's one of our principals at our building buildings and she is fantastic and, and helps with many aspects of kindergarten and curriculum throughout the district. And so she's here on the presentation tonight too. And then we have Mrs. Bonick. She's our director of communications and technology and She's the one that's running our PowerPoint here. So when I say next slide, she's right there, ready to help. And um, is there anybody else, Mrs. Bonick, that I might be forgetting that's helping here tonight? No, not on, on okay. the call that I'm aware of. Okay, very good. So while we're, while we're going through this presentation, I want you to feel free to, um, there's a chat that you can put questions in if you have questions. We'll be monitoring that throughout the presentation and hopefully answer some questions as we go. And maybe we will get back with you tomorrow possibly too, if it's something that we need to talk to you possibly about and not put in the chat. So, but feel free that if you have questions throughout the, throughout the presentation to go ahead and put it in the chat and we'll try our best to get back with you. So, the first slide I want to talk about is the district and Anchor Bay is known countywide um, as having highly, highly qualified teachers and staff and we're committed to promoting educational excellence for all of our students. Anchor Bay is one of the top rated districts in our county for Macomb and all 10 of our schools are Cognia um, accredited, sorry, and that just means that we've gone through a process for school improvement. We all have plans and they've all been accepted um, through, a, through a program and all of our districts go through that and we are very confident in the fact that all our districts are communicating together and working together for the same goal and that's for achievement and high achievement with students. Uh, are some of the other how, um, the other points I want to talk about with the district uh, is that Anchor Bay has an award-winning instrumental program, an exceptional fine arts program, all the way from kindergarten to 12th grade. We start young with our students, and the, our students participate in music classes, art classes. PE classes, technology classes, and Mandarin Chinese classes. But as far as the instrumental and music programs, we start them very young. And we also have a fifth grade band program that is unique to our district. We try to get them um, started earlier than just sixth grade. And that gives our students a chance to experience the instruments earlier on. We have strong academic or athletic programs and it produced a number of championships and we're not a pay to play district. So we're not asking students to pay to participate and we're pretty proud of that fact in our district. We have an extensive early childhood program and you might already be aware of that with our young fives and our um, preschool programs and provide ongoing early interventions. We're pretty proud of those early intervention programs with our district. Um, I want to talk a little bit about our elementary highlights, elementary M-STEP scores. That's our state, state testing that we, all of our students go through. Our elementary scores are always consistently in the top three in all subjects in the county. And those subjects are the math, reading and writing. And also we are very high with the science and social studies too when we're compared to the other districts in the county. We have Mandarin Chinese that are taught at every elementary in our, in our elementary buildings and that's taught kindergarten through fifth grade. We also have Project Lead the Way which is STEM programs. If you're not familiar with that, that's science, technology, engineering, and math. 
and that's offered at every building also. We have, we, um, the technology teachers, they have curriculum that they follow, but they also follow the Project Lead the Way curriculum. So that's a combination that we follow in, in our district. So we're very proud of that and that students love our Project Lead the Way and technology courses. And we also, I, as I talked about earlier, the fifth grade band, that's available and literacy and math supports are provided by our certified teachers. And we have extra support that is in our, in our buildings that we have um, literacy tutors and math tutor support. And again, that they are certified teachers and that's not always found in every district. So we're very proud of that fact. And we have a variety of extracurricular activities such as student council and green teams at every one of our elementary buildings. So you are heading into a great district and all of our buildings are right on with, with having high achievement at each building. So if you haven't been exposed to Anchor Bay, you're in for a treat this, this coming year. If you haven't registered your, your child yet for kindergarten, the enrollment packets are available online. If you just go to anchorbay.misd.net, you can get it online through that. And there's a parent tab and an enrollment tab, and then you can pull down that information. You can go to any of our elementary schools and just go to the office and ask for a kindergarten packet for enrollment, and they will provide you for that with that. Or you could just go to our district administration office on County Line Road too, and we have packets that are available there. So there's many ways that you can get the packets and you can drop them off, email them, fax them, or you can put them in, in regular mail. And that's how you would register your, your child. The information that's included in the, in the enrollment packet, so we have the enrollment forms, we need an original birth certificate, immunization records, we need the parent and guardian photo ID, two proofs of residency, home language survey that's included in the packet, concussion awareness form, vision and hearing evaluation, kindergarten checklist that's, in, that's included, transportation request form, which we'll go over in a minute, and the health department disclosure of immunization information. So that is, <clears throat> excuse me, those are the those are the pieces that are in that packet that are important that you would need to fill out. <clears throat> Excuse me. So moving on, kindergarten options. So you might not be aware, but we do have a full day kindergarten. We have a half day option for kindergarten. And we also have Young Fives. So Young Fives is basically looking at bir uh, your birthdays between June and December and kindergarten eligibility are students that are five years old on or before September 1st. Now, if, if your child is after September 1st, there is a waiver option, but you have to catch that waiver. Um, the last day for the waiver is eligibility is December 1st. So beyond December 1st, we cannot accept any students into kindergarten. That's just part of the law and that we follow that we follow that law for Michigan. Moving on, transportation. Transportation is available for our kindergarten students that live in a busing area. And if you have an alternative need for busing, the alternative bus forms can be found in the packet that either you can find that online or we can provide that for you at our buildings. So there, that alternative form is there. Sometimes if you have uh, your child that's going to get childcare from another house or something like that, that would be the situation. Or if it's a different bus stop, then that you would use that form for that. The next slide's talking about support services and we're very proud in our district to have many support systems for students that do have some struggles. Um, we want to make sure that we're meeting our needs of the students at their developmental levels. And so we have speech and language therapists within the district. We have multi-tiered support system, MTSS for short, and that consists of the speech therapist, 
psychologists, social workers, teacher consultants, the classroom teacher, the principal of the building, and possibly the literacy or math tutors that are in the building. So it's a team approach, and we look at the needs of the students, how well they're doing in the classrooms, if there are issues, then the principal will contact the parents and talk about you know, some of the supports that might be in place or might be needed to be put in place. So those are some things that we offer in the buildings. Um, also ECSC, Early Childhood Special Education, is offered and if you are thinking that your child is still not ready for kindergarten or doesn't meet that age requirement, that might be an option for you. Or also the Blossoming Fours, that's another program that's, re that's run through our early childhood program. So if it's the special education department that you need, the phone number is here for you. Um, you can take a picture of that if you want to or you can find that on the website. Or if you're looking for the early childhood program, that's Carol O'Shea. She's our supervisor for that building. And you could contact them at the Early Childhood Center. Again, that might be if your child is not old enough yet to enter kindergarten or young folks. So what will your child learn in, the, in kindergarten? Of course, they're gonna learn reading, writing, and math. Um, those are the main subjects that we focus on, but there's a lot to um, kindergarten than just those basic reading, writing, and math skills. Um, the students, I like I said, would have STEM, that science, technology, engineering, and math, and the teachers are really great at um, integrating those, those areas into their everyday lessons throughout the day. Mandarin Chinese is um, one of our specials that's that's available to students, physical education, um, science, writing, social studies. That's all part of the curriculum along with social interactions. We all know that that's a very important part for the, for the students and they all love those, those times where they can um, learn from each other. And then art and music are also integrated into, into the curriculum at the buildings. So that is, the information I have to share with you. And again, this is an exciting time I know for all the parents and really you came to hear the three teachers that are gonna come up next. They have a lot of great information to share with you. And I'm going to go ahead and turn that over to Mrs. Davis is first and she's gonna talk about readiness skills. Thank okay, you, Mrs. Thank Davis. Thank you. Thank you so much, Terry. So, uh, Kindergarten readiness skills, those are basically the skills that we are looking for the children to possess prior to entering kindergarten. Uh, so we'd like to have these skills already mastered. We would like them to be able to recognize their name in print. Uh, we label a lot of things around the classroom with their name, for example, their locker or a cubby area, folders and papers. So they need to be able to recognize their own name. They also need to be able to write their own name without the need of a name tag. They need to be able to utilize scissors, crayons, and pencils correctly. They also need to use a correct pencil grip and scissor grip, which I'll be talking about in a little more detail in a minute. And they also have to have their dominant hand determined. So are they right-handed or are they left-handed? Your child needs to be able to name all the capital letters in random order. They also need to identify rhyming words. And one of the ways I like to do that in class is I read a lot of books that rhyme, a lot of nursery rhymes. Um, that's a great way for them to hear those rhyming words. I also do something called echo rhyming where I'll say two words and have them repeat after me. So now that they're hearing what rhyming sounds like, and then I transition into asking them if two words rhyme or not. They also need to recite the alphabet by saying it clearly and slowly, not just singing the alphabet song. They need to be able to sit attentively through a teacher read aloud or through a teacher presenting a lesson. They need to identify, sequence, and write their numbers from one to 10. And then we'll transition and work a lot on T numbers in kindergarten. They need to demonstrate counting skills. So if we were to give them a, you know, a pile of some manipulatives, would they be able to count them out correctly? They need to be able to recognize the basic two-dimensional shapes, which would be the circle, square, rectangle, and triangle. 
In kindergarten, we will also teach them about a hexagon and then move on to three-dimensional shapes. Your, your child should be familiar with the parts of a book. So if we said, okay, can you point to the cover or can you point to the title of the book? They need to understand the difference between letters and words and the pictures. And they need to have an understanding of punctuation as well. It's really important that they're able to share information with others. We want them to be able to talk about what they're learning, what they're doing at home. And so they need to be able to express their thoughts and ideas um, orally with other people, whether it be the whole class or with partners too. And it's important that they are able to have self-help skills. So can they button, uh, can they zip their coat or their pants? Uh, can they um, use a fork and a spoon correctly? So those are those type of self-help skills. And they also need to be able to use the bathroom independently. Now I'm gonna talk about fine motor skills. And I'm gonna start by talking about the difference between fine motor and gross motor. Gross motor are those skills that allow us to sit in a chair or to walk. Those are our large, our large body muscles that, that allow us to do those everyday functions like running and throwing a ball or kicking. Our focus right now is more about fine motor development. And those are the um, small muscles, the development in your um, hands, your wrist and your fingers. And those are really important because if they do not have a strong fine motor development, the tasks that we're going to ask them to do in kindergarten can be very difficult for them. Uh, for example, would be like cutting and gluing and writing. Um, these things um, take a lot of coordination. And so when a child struggles with that, they uh, fatigue quickly and they sometimes will just not want to do the certain tasks. And these type of tasks, those paper, pencil, and gluing and cutting tasks are a large part of our kindergarten day. I'm going to start talking about scissor grip. So uh, our scissors, um, typically you'll find scissors that have a small hole and then a larger hole. So your child's thumb should go in the small hole and then the fingers go in the, um, the, the larger hole. So the thumb, the small hole should be always pointing up to the ceiling when they cut. And then they just do that open and shut movement. Now for some children, this is really difficult. They have a hard time picking up their scissors the correct way, or they um, start cutting and they're actually aiming towards their body. You wanna make sure that they're aiming away from their body. One of the things you can do to help them is by um, moving the index finger out. And sometimes that stabilizes the scissors for them and gives them a little extra support. Uh, the other hand is important because that's what's holding and guiding the paper as they cut. Next, I'm going to talk about the pencil grip. So I'd like to use a, a golf size pencil in my classroom. Just it's, it's smaller for their little hands. Um, but what we're looking for them to do is to use their um, index and their thumb to, to pull, or pinch the barrel of the pencil, and then they rest it on their middle finger. What we sometimes see children doing is they rely on their pinky and their ring finger to hold the pencil. And what we sometimes see is where they are actually resting the tip of the pencil on their pinky or their ring finger. And that can sometimes be an indication of a child that is struggling with fine motor development. But there's some things that we can do to help them. One thing that we try is you can just take a puff ball and have the, their pinky and their ring finger holding the puff ball. So now those fingers are top, tucked away and that's leaving um, the middle finger, the index finger and, and the um, thumb to hold the pencil. There's also a lot of commercially made um, pencil grips that you can use. And there's some that kind of look like a claw and there's a position for the, the fingers and the thumb and that gets them in the right position. Uh, that can work well for some children. There's also some that just look more chunky like this and it has a place again for the thumb and the pointer finger and it, then it rests nicely on their middle finger. And there's some that are also just like a triangular shape too. Um, basically, if your child is struggling with their pencil grip, you wanna try any of these methods that you can see what works best for your child. And none of them are right, none of them are wrong. It's just what is comfortable for your child, what is good for your child to get them into that correct pencil grip. 
The good thing about fine motor development is the activities are super fun and engaging for kids to do. And whether your child has a problem with fine motor development or not, these activities are great for all children. One of our favorite type of activities is just using Play-Doh. Uh, just the squeezing and manipulating of the Play-Doh is great for that development in the, the, the wrist and the fingers. Um, one thing I like to do is have the kids roll it into balls and then they can count how many balls they have rolled out. And now you're um, incorporating math skills along with fine motor development. I also teach them how to roll it into like a snake and then they can form alphabet letters um, out of, of the snake that they just rolled. We also do lacing activities where they can lace beads or cereal or um, noodles on pipe cleaners and shoelaces. You just wanna try and find anything that you have at home and just mix it up and keep it engaging and fun for your child. We also do tweezer activities where they're picking up like puff balls or cotton balls or small, small objects and they're moving the um, object with their tweezers from one location to another. They can also do that and include counting skills with that also. Uh, clothespins now come in a variety of shapes and sizes and the squeezing of the clothespins are great for fine motor development also. Uh, one of my favorite things to do in the classroom, too, is just paper cutting and shredding. I'll have the kids sit in front of a, a bowl and give them strips of paper, and they can just sit there and cut, and it's a great way to practice those scissor skills, too. But they can also do ripping, too. So if you have junk mail, you can have your child just rip the junk mail apart for you, and they're just shredding it for you. But that's great fine motor development also. I can't stress enough about the importance, too, in coloring. Um, because we do a lot of it in a kindergarten classroom. It is a very important skill and it is great for fine motor development also. If your child indicates or doesn't seem to be interested in coloring, uh, try different tools like let them color with markers sometimes or highlighters, colored pencils, sometimes just changing up that tool can help them a lot too. I like to do a lot of like directed drawing activities. There's great videos um, on YouTube, for example, where it teaches them step-by-step step how to draw something. That might make them a little bit more motivated to color as well. And then another activity that is great is using stickers to peel them off and put them on another piece of paper. You can draw like basic shapes and have them attach the stickers around too. The main idea is just try and think about what you have at home that will allow them to do those pinching and um, shredding type of activities that will help build that fine motor development. It doesn't have to be fancy. The key is just making it fun and just keeping them eager and motivated to keep practicing those type of skills. I'm now gonna turn it over to Mrs. Hunt and she's gonna speak to you about language arts. Hello, I'm Mrs. Hunt. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about language arts throughout the year in kindergarten. Um, in, kinder in kindergarten, language arts is a huge part of our day. Um, we work it in throughout the entire day and it encompasses a variety of activities. I'm just gonna go through the PowerPoint with you real quickly. The first section is listening, um, following multi-step directions. Um, and very rarely do we give one direction in kindergarten. It's usually three or four steps. So you want, we're working on making sure that they're listening to the direction and following it in the order that it was given. Asking appropriate questions. Um, we're looking for, are they listening to what we're talking about and do their questions make sense to what has been asked of them? And listen and respond appropriately in large and small groups. Again, it's listening to the speaker. Sometimes it's their turn to be the speaker. Sometimes it's their turn to be the listener. And when it's their turn to be the listener, are they paying attention to who's talking? Are they responding to the conversation with um, things that make sense? And are they listening without interrupting? So then we move on to speaking. And we're looking for the kindergartners to be speaking in complete sentences. We want them to speak clearly, audibly. Um, they do have times where they're standing up in front of the entire class and they are the speaker, all eyes are on them. So are they able to communicate with their friends in class? Making presentations. 
Um, they may be simple presentations, but we do presentations in kindergarten daily. We do show and tell where they talk about the objects that they've brought in and they're sharing information about them. Um, we might do projects at home and then they bring them in and share them with their friends at school, tell them about the steps they took to make the project and to tell them all about it. Or sometimes um, they might be talking, they might be sharing a book that they've written in class. We have something called author's chair where they can get in front of the class and read the book. So we're making sure that they're speaking loudly enough and focused on their audience. And again, remaining focused. They want, we want to make sure that they're not wandering off to another topic, that they're staying focused on what they're supposed to be sharing with others in class. Then we move on to handwriting and in the handwriting we're talking about printing. So we're practicing forming upper and lowercase letters correctly because we're not using just uppercase letters. Most of them come in knowing how to, to form the uppercase letters, but we, are, we learn by the end of the year that we're writing a sentence, only the first letter will be uppercase to begin the sentence, the rest will be lowercase. So we're practicing making the, both the upper and the lowercase letters correctly. Um, when we're writing, we practice leaving spaces between words or word-like clusters of letters, and that we're always writing from left to right and top to bottom. All of the letters that we practice writing should always be starting at the top. And you can see um, if your child is practicing writing their name at home, take a look at where they're starting on the paper. Are they starting up at top or are they starting at the bottom? If you see they're at the bottom, remind them to start up at the top. We start up at the top and then move down. Moving on, we have reading genres. We are exposed to a variety of reading genres. We have concepts and picture books, narrative books, informational books, environmental texts, nursery rhymes, stories, poetry and songs. We incorporate a lot of literacy, a lot of stories into our day. So we have a variety of genres that we cover. And then moving on to phonics. We are very lucky that our district has purchased um, a new phonics program for us. It's called Phonics Units of Study. Um, and this year is, we started to pilot it last year. Of course, that got cut short a little bit. So we're finishing the pilot this year. And um, I'm lucky enough to be one of the teachers piloting the program. And it's fantastic. So I'm really excited that all of your kindergartners, no matter what school they go to next year, everybody will be able to participate in our new phonics program. Um, it covers one syllable words, final consonants, learning basic sight words, initial letters and sound associations, picture clues and patterns. So we're taking all of that to really essentially help us learn how to read. We're talking about um, CVC words, consonant vowel, consonant words like pig, dad, sit. Um, the program introduces 54 um, high frequency words. We call them snap words because we want them to be able to read them in a snap, not sounding them out. Um, the expectation is that at the end of the year, they are able to read and write at least 40 of them independently, but they are introduced to 54 of them. And then we move on to word families. So these are taking like CBC type words, word like clusters, and learning the different types of families like the UG family, bug, rug, tug. So they realize once they get the, the UG UG sound, they can put different letters in front of that to create new words and they've just expanded their reading and writing abilities. Um, then we're using our sounds and our patterns to read and write words. So this takes us to the spelling section um, where it says spelling a number about 40 frequently encountered and personally, personally meaningful words correctly. And that's um, actually in incorporated through our phonics program. And like I said previously, we are introduced to 54 of the words, but they are expected to be able to master at least 40 of them. And we're, um, when we're not doing correctly spelled like snap words, sight words. We're relying on beginning and ending sounds to help us sound out some words as we're writing. Again, that we're doing that through our phonics program. And we're using word walls and word tests just to help expand our reading and writing abilities. And then we move on to writing. And believe it or not, we are writing sentences by the end of kindergarten. We are writing brief, brief personal narratives using pictures, words, word-like clusters. So that means the kindergartners are thinking about something that happened to them in their real life. 
and they're, they're writing sentences about it. Um, and then also brief informational pieces. So maybe we're reading a story about penguins and then the kindergartners are writing facts about something that they learned about penguins. So that's the inform informational writing. Um, and then if we go to the next slide, we'll see reading throughout the year in kindergarten. And like I said before, um, the kindergartners are expected to read 40, it says all 40 sight words. We had, we originally just had 40 words um, and with our new program, they're given 54, but they are expected, like I said, to read 40 of them in a snap. And that means without sounding them out, that they have so much practice with them that they have learned them. And then we move on to reading actual books. So students will be expected to read and retell a DRA four book without any errors by the end of the year to be considered proficient. And you can see at the bottom of this um, slide, there are some examples of some level four words or some, yes, yeah, some level four DRA um, text that the kindergartners can read. Um, and we do get there. I know it's a little overwhelming. We begin with some simple texts, maybe some pattern books and predictable texts, and then we incorporate the snap words and the sight words that we've learned. And we learn different strategies of how to figure out unknown words. And eventually they start reading on their own. I um, mean, as they're reading books, then they are, um, we read them, we're learning how to retell them, you know, who are the characters, what happened, and even making connections to our, their, our own lives compared to the story. So as you can see, kindergarten has changed throughout the years for sure. Um, I've been teaching kindergarten for a long time. This is actually my 21st year in kindergarten and it's completely different than when it used to be. We used to um, have the kindergartners come into kindergarten and we were going to teach them their letters and teach them their sounds and then and that was kindergarten. Well, those days are gone. Um, we are reading and writing. You know, by the end of the year, the expectation is that they can read a level four book independently and retell it, and also in, um, independently write three sentences about a given topic. Um, so to write those sentences, they have to think, what do I want to say? What words make up that sentence? What sounds make up those words? That's a lot that they have to do on their own. So as you can see, the expectation is that they know their letters when they walk in the door um, and then we build on it. Um, so how do we get there? If we're not there, how do we get there? I'm just gonna share just a couple activities today um, to help you get there. Um, and the first one I wanna share with is using um, a magnetic, magnetic letters and a cookie tray. Um, these that those are both just from the dollar store. You don't have to spend a lot of money to help your child be prepared for kindergarten. Um, like I said, both of those items were for the from the dollar store, so they cost me two dollars. And what can you do to help them if they don't know if they're let their letters? Start with their name. You know, if their name is James, start with those five letters J A M E S until they've got their letter their name down um, very well. Once they have that add a few more letters, practice what are the names of those letters. And you don't wanna throw the whole alphabet at them at the same and all at once because that's a little overwhelming. And you, don't, you want them to have a love for learning, you don't want them to be overwhelmed by it. So you'll add a few letters at a time until they get the whole alphabet down. Then you can start playing games with it. Um, maybe you can mix up all of the letters on the cookie tray and ask them, can you put those in order for me and have them go through. If they have to sing the alphabet to help them put them in order, that's fine. They're just here, they're hearing it. It's reinforcing the words of um, the letters of the alphabet, put them in order. Maybe you can play a game, um, what, what's missing. So maybe you can set up the letters in order and take one or two of them out. Have them go through a name, point to each letter, name them until they figure out which letter is missing. So those are some ideas just to get some letter identification. You can also use the magnets and the cookie tray to help with sounds. So maybe um, once they have got their letters down, then you ask them, oh, what do you hear in the beginning of k -k cat? Have them go through and say the, go through the letters, say the sounds, and they, they can find the C or the K because they both make that same sound and put it on the tray. Um, or maybe you can have them go find a favorite toy. 
you know, go find a favorite toy, bring it here. And they bring back one of their favorite stuffies. I know they all love their stuffies. So what does stuffy start with? And they can put an S on the tray. Once they get um, good with all of their letter sounds, again, you can play games. You can go through and sing the alphabet, point to each, put the magnets in order, point to each of the letters. Instead of saying the name of the letter, say the sound. Um, you can play games. Oh, now that you know all of your letters, let's try to sound out some words. K, at, cat. What are the letters in cat? And go through and they can actually spell words on the tray. So that's one idea of things to do to help them learn their letters and their sounds. Um, another idea is to use a wipe off board. Um, you can get a real wipe off board, which you can buy at the store, or you can get a piece of paper and a page protector that works just, the, just as well. Um, and it's much cheaper, especially if you have a page protector at your house. So either is fine. Um, and then to write, you will have to get the wipe off marker, but then for an eraser, you can use an old sock. You can use, these are just makeup removers from the dollar store. There's three in a package. So you have three erasers. That's what we use in my classroom um, on the uh, wipe off boards because kindergartners love wipe off boards. You can ask them to write their name five times with paper and pencil and they're miserable. You say get out your wipe off board and wipe their write their name and they're ready to go. They just love them. So whenever you can incorporate them because something that might seem like a chore otherwise the, all of a sudden the wipe off board makes it fun. They need practice holding the utensil, the, any, the writing utensil. So wipe off board is like you've learned, you heard about in the fine motor. So a wipe off board is a great reason, um, a great opportunity to use that writing material. So maybe you can have them uh, write their name. You know, um, each morning before they come to breakfast, can you sign your name before you eat your breakfast today? That's a fun way to get them to practice. Um, again, just like the magnets, you know, maybe they can just practice writing on the board, practice uppercase, they could practice lowercase, whatever it seems fun for them, keep practicing. Um, they can make lists once they get their letters and sounds, maybe they can sound out some simple words or they can make lists. You can even incorporate the magnet the magnets and the um, wipe off board together. So if you're having them sound out like it sound out the word pig first have them make it with the uh, magnetic board. And so they can with the magnets, you know, pig and they have the word pig then have them write it. So that's the way that it's just reinforcing some of the letters and the sounds that they're hearing. You just want to keep the sessions short and fun. You want them to enjoy what they're doing, whatever they're doing. If they think it's a game, then it's fun. If they think they're sitting down to practice their letters, then it's a chore. So you want to make it fun and exciting for them. Keep it short. If they have an attention span and today they can only sit for 10 minutes, then they only sit for 10 minutes. You know, you want it, like I said, you want to keep it fun. They want, you want learning to be fun because they, everything that they learn builds on what we're doing in kindergarten. So you want to have those foundations ready for them to go when they walk in the door. And another thing you can do, talk to your child. Um, I know that sounds silly, but talk to your child, read to your child. They pick up so much from the language. I know we're on screens a lot, just having conversations. They pick up a lot of language that way as well. And now I'm going to introduce you to Mrs. McClellan, and she will be talking to you about math in kindergarten. Good evening, everyone. Um, like they said, my name is Mrs. McClelland. I'm one of the kindergarten teachers at McCann's Elementary. I'm going to go through the math slide with you really quick. Um, the first one, the first concept that we study throughout the year in kindergarten is number sense. And the students should be able to count to 100 by ones by the end of the year and by tens and fives students should be able to recognize numbers zero through 20 and also write them. They should be able to use objects to make sets of any given number up to 20. We will develop an understanding of equal to, greater than, or less than, and using place value skills to represent numbers zero through 20. So back in the slide where it says, you know, readiness kindergarten readiness skills, having the base knowledge of the numbers one through 10 
will help them tremendously as we continue on with numbers greater than 10. We will also be studying patterns throughout the years, um, creating, describing, and extending those patterns using pattern blocks or just looking at our clothing and noticing the stripes of patterns, patterns for numbers. Um, moving on to geometry, um, students will be able to identify the basic shapes like Mrs. Davis said, the circle, triangle, square, and rectangle, and also we introduce them to the hexagon. After we study those shapes, we will move on to the 3D sh uh, shapes, the solid shapes, cone, cube, sphere, and cylinder. They will be able to draw and build those shapes and use those shapes to make larger shapes. We will also be looking a lot at graphing and we do this throughout the year. For instance, at the beginning of the year, my students graph what is their favorite kind of apple, a red, a yellow, or green one. And just by putting all that information in a graph form, it helps students visually see um, what the, mo the most um, liked apple is in our class. And they can visually just see that, you know, red is greater than um, green. And we can use words, those vocabulary words, like equal to, less than, or more than. We can um, analyze and understand the data. That's what, we, that's what we call the information that we put on a graph as data and use that to classify objects into categories and using graphing to also work on those counting skills. We study measurement by using non-standard units of measurement like cubes or popsicle sticks to measure different items in our classroom or um, around the, the, um, the room. We will compare measurable, measurable attributes of two or more objects, identifying time to the nearest hour and identifying coins and their values. For computation, students will be able to solve simple addition and subtraction problems within the number 10 using different strategies like using your fingers or using cubes to represent the addition or subtraction problem. They can draw pictures if they need to, um, to figure out answers to problems. And then they will also be able to fluently add and subtract within the number five. So two and three, two plus three equals five, those any numbers up to five. So both of the other teachers talked about how to get your students ready for kindergarten. What are some things we can do before they enter in? one of the biggest things that I did with my own children when they were younger is just constantly counting. And a big, a big idea and what we did often was counting while we were driving in the car. Just start counting, you know, just start counting randomly. Or you can count how many red cars you see as you're driving along. So start doing that so that, you know, when they come into kindergarten, they have a base knowledge and by the end of the year, we'll be able to get all the way up to 100. Another activity that I um, want to share with you is if you, we all kindergarten teachers love the dollar store. So a lot of the items that we use can be found at the dollar store. For instance, a pack of index cards and some stickers. So what you can do with these index cards first and foremost is have your child, you know, write the numbers on there and use stickers to represent that number. You, and using the stickers, it helps with their fine motor as well. So the number seven, and then they have seven stickers. And then what you can do is you can play memory with these. You can use them as flashcards. You can cut them apart to make puzzles. And then they have to match the puzzle pieces together. You can also use the index card. And then, like we said, using Play-Doh is also a great fine motor activity. Have them make they can even, you know, just put it right on top of the number six, roll it out into a snake to make the numbers. So there's lots of different ideas that you can do with just two things, index cards and stickers. So that is it for math. And I'm going to turn it back over to Terry, Mr. Wedge. Thank you so much. I want to thank Mrs. Davis, Mrs. Hunt, and Mrs. McClelland for their information that they shared tonight. It, you know, the, like Mrs. Hunt said, kindergarten is not what it used to be. And now I think every year we, we are expected to do more, but you know, what's interesting is the students rise to the occasion 
and our students in Anchor Bay do really well, but a lot of it's due to our teaching staff and how well they do, they present the information to the students. So we want to thank them so much for presenting tonight and giving you some insight as to what things you could work on over the summer and getting the students ready. Um, Anita, can you share? Oh, you do have it up there. I'm sorry. So the, the slide that we're talking about next is, you know, an important piece to that packet that you have or you need to pick up to fill out for the enrollment. There's a student readiness checklist that's in that packet, and that's important to fill out. You need to really think through, is, is your child ready? Are they confident? Are they cooperative, confident, and responsible? And, you know, you want to make sure that you're thinking through and seeing what you can do with your child over the summer. And simple things like reading to your child and, like Mrs. McClellan said, just counting. You don't have to spend a lot of money to do, do activities with, the, with your children at home. And a lot of that is developmental. If you look online, um, just the language piece of it and communicating and asking questions and doing those WH, WH questions like who, what, where, questioning students and, and just putting some information out there to them and seeing how they're reacting back. So it doesn't need to be something that you're spending a lot of money on. But that checklist is in that packet that you get online or at the schools. So be sure to fill that out if you have not done that. You wanna be sure you're enrolling the students so we can have them in sections. Um, the next slide is we wanna share with you a video that will be available at all the building websites. And it's an additional kindergarten readiness video that these teachers that presented tonight, they provided us with this video last year when we were not able to do, actually it was funny because the first night we were supposed to have readiness night last year was the very first night of quarantine for the pandemic. So we weren't able to do this information last year in person either. So we thought, hey, let's get the teachers together and they put together this great video and that is gonna be available on all the district elementary school websites for you to look at. And the information that they shared tonight is also in that video. And so if you didn't catch something, um, chances are you'll be able to see that in the video that's provided. So they do a great job of giving that information and hopefully you learned a little bit tonight. And um, I know that um, this is a big step for a lot of our, our um, did I freeze? I'm sorry, I'm, am I frozen? Nope, okay. It looks no, like I, I'm I just stopped. On my yeah, I stopped the share. Gotcha, um. okay, we're okay. So <laughs> I just wanted to let everyone know that that information and that video is out there for everyone and like we said, just be sure to work with your children over the summer and making sure that they feel confident in going into kindergarten. Kindergarten is such an exciting time. And we all know that kids are excited to start school and we're excited to have them in Anchor Bay. So thank you so for Terry, attending tonight. Yes. Oh, well, before we leave, I just wanna go over a few of the questions mm -hmm. that are yes. in the chat. And okay. um, if they're quick and easy to answer, um, certainly we'll let our, our experts on the call answer that. And if not, we are going to do a Q&A and that'll also be posted on the website. So um, one of the questions in the chat was, are incoming kindergartners eligible for um, new summer school options? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the summer school options are intended for upcoming grades. So yes, going into kindergarten is one of the courses that we have for summer school. Okay, we had another question. Will we be discussing young fives? And I think we glossed over young fives. Um, if you don't feel you got a full answer of what makes young fives different than half day, I would certainly say call the school in which you'll be attending and the principal could answer that question. Unless Melissa or Terry, you wanna broad Based on just, question on just to throw something out there is we do have information on Young Fives on the district website. So if you're looking for information for Young Fives, it is on the website specifically for Young Fives. And um, it does follow the curriculum for kindergarten. 
and you just have to make sure that the child is falls within that age range. Okay. Uh, I know we don't have Mary on the call, and I should know this because I see all the people coming in here, but do we accept a copy of the birth certificate? I usually see her making a copy of it, um, but I think anybody that enrolls in online is able to, to do a copy, and then uh, usually as the year goes on, they will get an original. Is that correct, Terry? I believe so. I, I'm trying to remember myself now that you say that. I, but I, Melissa you know, we, has something to say, but no, I was just going to jump in. Um, yes, at the building, they can make a copy for you. Um, and if you are submitting online, you can submit the copy of the birth certificate. And if the building needed something further, they would contact you. Okay. I was going to say, I know with, with COVID, things have certainly been a little bit more, we've had to be a little bit more flexible um, because people weren't dropping things off like they were. Um, when opting for in-district school of choice, when will, be in, well, when will we be informed if our child has been accepted at the school of choice? So if this is specific to kindergarten. This was out of district or in-district? In-district. In-district is, um, that is a decision that's made usually in August. We don't make those decisions for in-district until later because we want to make sure that we are um, enrolling students and filling the needs within the buildings first. So homeschool goes first. If we have space at kindergarten, then we allow. So uh, in-district, yeah, that comes after. Um, so another question, how do we determine if a child should be in young fives or kindergarten? Again, as uh, Mr. Wedge identified, we have some good information on our website, but it's always great just to call the school principal and um, they will work through that with you. They sometimes put you in touch with um, a kindergarten teacher who can walk you through it. Your preschool teacher, if your child's in that, often has really good um, information and advice as well. Anything I've forgotten, experts? Nope. Okay. Um, can your fifth grader bring your student in off the bus or does an adult have to be there? When they're on a bus, the, go ahead, Melissa. No, I was just speaking, if your child's um, on a bus coming into the building, we always have assistants that help the children get to their classroom. So kindergartners are never exiting buses alone. Um, we always have somebody guiding them. If they do have an older sibling, most all of the buildings help allow for that older sibling to help guide them to their classroom. Okay. Um, will hearing tests be waived for incoming students of kindergarten? As of right now, I do know that there's a delay in getting those processed. I know even the county right now is at a delay getting the vision and hearing done um, due to different COVID protocols. So right now, we still highly suggest that you get every other document that you can in just to process your registration. And then once hearing and vision becomes available, you would then submit that at a later date. So you can still completely register without those two pieces of information currently. All right, this parent also asked two very specific questions regarding COVID and I'll kind of blanket statement that we have to follow all the laws of the state and, um, and we do that. So one of the questions has, had to do with COVID vaccinations being required and right now they are not required at the state nor are they even being given to students. So that is a no at this time. Could that change in the future? That would be something that we would have to monitor at the state level. And will school go back to ending at four o'clock instead of three? And of course, that is uh, also not all of our schools um, pre-COVID all ended at the same time. So um, school start and end times are determined each year and published, um, but specifically to COVID, that has to do with the reconfirmation. And um, our Board of Education is looking at um, increasing time back at the elementary school, but a final decision has not been made as to when that would happen. But I certainly know that is uh, the direction we will be heading in. Terry or Melissa, anything you'd wanna add on that? Nope, you hit it right on the head. All right. 
Um, <laughs> um, if a child doesn't know um, or has difficulty with something on the readiness list, is it a deal breaker? I think our kindergarten teachers can speak to that. There is no deal breakers and, and we take students and uh, work with them from all different levels. Um, but would we want to add anything, guys, that I'm... I think one, no. thing, yeah. one thing that we might want to add is the beauty of Anchor Bay is we do offer three different programs allowing us to meet the children's needs. So keep in mind, we offer the Young Fives program. We also have a half day option for children that may not have that social maturity, may need a little bit more time um, gaining some of those skills. That's also an option. And then the full day program. So obviously that readiness list is a guide um, and all of the things that our teachers provided you with tonight help us to get ready. But please keep those conversations going. You can always reach out to your building and we're happy to guide you personally um, in regards to your own child. And I think this is always a really good time. I take a lot of phone calls here at central office. Um, and one thing I always remind parents is making that decision for kindergarten does not mean you, you can't change your decision. Meaning, you know, they might need young fives and then they sprout come February, March, April, and you go right on to first grade if of course the age qualifies you for that it also could mean where you're deciding half day because you think you might want to go from half day to full day and the same thing happens or or they do need more time so you have that option as a parent you're always going to be you know advocating what's best um, and working in collaboration with with our experts so um you know just be mindful of that you're not making a, a determination that you can't alter um, again, there was some questions about how young fives differ from kindergarten, and we have a lot of that on our website. It's probably best to make a phone call if you're really making that decision and you're not sure where you want to land. I would, I would direct you back to your school. Um, is Chinese required? I think you're referring to Mandarin, the Mandarin special. Ms. Van Hall, is there anything you want to speak on with that at kindergarten level? So what it is, is they're exposed to five different um, special courses, which is great because all kindergarten programs at one point in their day, they will go to an elective gym, art, music, STEM, technology, um, and Mandarin. The kids really enjoy Mandarin. It's not just the language, but it's exposure to um, children from around the world. Um, they do a lot with just learning about the community, um, participate in a lot of songs, um, counting activities and things like that. So the kids are very eager. They're eager to learn about another culture. Um, and that's kind of what it's based at at the kindergarten level. Okay, um, several questions here again about doing the doctor visit, the hearing and vision, and, and like uh, Ms. Van Hall already stated, go ahead and register with what you have. It's better to get them you know, in the system and then we'll be following up if there's more documents that you need. Um, talked about schools of choice, young fives. Is young fives at all schools or is that to be determined? To be determined. Right now we only have it at two buildings and that's, it could expand according to the numbers that we have for enrollment. All right. Um, out of district schools of choice, again, if you go on our website, we have the dates that are specific to out of district schools of choice. Um, we do accept students, but in terms of what elementary school you land at, again, that has to do with the timeline and the space availability. Um, Okay, I think the person that asked about the kindergartner getting uh, to class off the bus is also asking at the end of the day if adult has to be there or can their fifth grader walk them into their home. I guess if you're speaking of exiting the building, um, obviously if the child is a pickup um, and they're not on bus transportation, then yes, that adult would have to be present to take the child. Um, if they go onto the bus, they're escorted by a bus helper, an adult, or if they do have a sibling, we always work to make those arrangements. If the sibling needs to come down and then they proceed with the bus helper, that's an option too. Okay. Um, it sounds like they're wanting to be very specific about what happens at the bus stop. 
Oh. Like yes. I'm assuming, I'm thinking like when, when they get off the bus, can their fifth grade sibling walk them to their home from the bus? I mean, I would think that that would have to be made arrangements with the bus drivers so that they know that that's the case. Right. Yes, and currently right now, transportation does require an adult to be present when we um, let off a kindergarten just for safety protocols. But those things can be talked about through tr transportation department as well. Um, are we expecting incoming kindergarten students coming out of a pandemic to be slightly less prepared than previous classes? If so, are there any things being done to prepare for this? I'll just kind of jump in real quickly. Um, one of the beauties of tonight's presentation is to kind of just get you thinking and to just raise our awareness. Um, there's a great YouTube link um, that Mrs. Bonnick is going to make available. It'll be available on the school websites as well. And it gives a lot of tips and tricks and some fun activities. That's our goal is to just kind of create an environment right now where they're used to talking about numbers and letters and things like that um, to get them excited about learning. Obviously, no, obviously we know due to the pandemic that things are you know, a little bit altered. Um, currently our students right now, things are a little bit altered. But again, just making that environment full of these learning activities. And really, if you tune into that video, there's a lot of um, helpful engagement activities to kind of help guide you through the summer. Um, in practicing. So I think the best way to summarize, um, again, we'll put some um, basic frequently asked questions. Um, and, and I know Mr. Wedge stated it best, you know, we're excited to welcome our, our newest members to the family. If you have older siblings, you've been through this, but if you're brand new, um, we're here, we're working, we work all summer as well. Um, uh, Mr. Wedge is in charge of elementary education. So, you know, you can start opening those lines of communication if, um, if you have questions about your registration packet or what status you are with enrollment. Um, you know, we're here to answer those questions. Our enrollment office also works all summer long. Um, so, so we're here and willing and able to do that. But I will remind you just like, um, Ms. Van Hall said, is we have a lot of tools and things on our website as well. So good stuff to watch and look at. Um, I think many of us have been through this. I, you know, I, I had three kindergartners at one point in time, and um, I feel that um, sense of urgency and anxiousness that comes from the parent side. But I think we can all say it, it goes so much better than you'll ever anticipate. And it's so fun to watch them um, engage and have this life outside of of the home. I think that's one of my favorite stages of um, being a parent. So with that, um, teachers, you guys want to say anything else? I'm going to jump in really quick, Mrs. Vonick, because I just thought of something too. Please keep your eyes and ears open because we are going to have more transition um, activities. We also will be providing all of our incoming kindergartners with learning packs. Um, there's a lot of different games, manipulatives, things like that, um, focusing on language arts and math learning. So all of the incoming kindergartners um, for Anchor Bay will receive a bag with a lot of tools and activities built inside and more information to come on how, how those will be dispersed to you. That's true. All right, and this has also been recorded. So um, if you run into a friend or a neighbor, they didn't miss out, they're not behind the schedule, they can visit our website, they can certainly turn in their packet. And um, yes, young fives will get the packet as well. Correct, Ms. Van Hall? Yes. All, all kindergarten, all kindergarten. Day, young fives and full day kindergarten um, gets the welcome packet with activities and things to do. So with that, uh, we will end this meeting. Again, we are excited to greet you in the fall. And if we can be of any assistance, don't hesitate to give us a call. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you.